sitting here with Oliver O'Connell, and as you can feel already, there's there's a, there's rhythm in the air. And Oliver, two mistakes. <laughs> I I know I know you very well this last few years, and I've enjoyed knowing you. Tell me, I know you're a drummer, I know you're a set dancer, and I know you're a box player. I, I know you're many other things, but those three things interest me. Which came first? Uh, the set dancing, I would think. I was I was half hoping you'd say that because. It feels to me like your rhythm comes from yeah. from the dancing. Yeah, I suppose so. And, um, <clears throat> I, I, I think I can dance. I, I've always, not to sound boastful or anything, like I, I, I was brought up with watching sit dancers in my house. In Doolan? In, in, well, just between Doolan and Liston Varna. <clears throat> I come from a place called Fern Hill, which is um, midway between Doolan and Liston Varna and the Doolan Road. And uh, I suppose I. I I released my life story there quite recently in an audio book and one of the things I recall actually in the very first chapter was uh, listening to Michael Russell sitting on our kitchen table playing a black Clark's tin whistle. They seem to be the tin whistles that were kind of on the go at that time more so than the concert pitch ones and uh, I was only like three or maybe four years of age but I have that memory in my head and I have an incredible memory if I may say so I can, I can, I can actually even recall the tablecloth that was on the table I can recall what was on it. There were squares in it with cups and saucers in one square and knives and forks in the other. And like that's, I'm not going to say how long ago that is. That's a long time ago. But I can, I remember watching the, the set dancers. And that time the, the lads who used to come to our house for the set dancers were great dancers. You had people like the great Gussie Gale, the Lord to mercy in his soul. He was drowned down in Phoenix. But he, he used to come in. He was one of the best. I used to be watching him. And uh, there was a couple more, Tom Shannon, the famous Tom Shannon used to come there as well. And I, I'd always watch the dancers and the energy that they used to create in our kitchen floor and the way that, that they were in turn, they kind of drove on the musicians. Did your parents dance? Oh, they did, yeah. My mother actually... Did your mother teach you to dance? My mother was a dance teacher many, yeah. many, many, many years ago, like, you know. And my What was a dance teacher in those days? What, 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 did you teach set dancing or, 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 or...? No, my mother My mother actually taught Irish dancing. Irish dancing. And, uh, and all my family, all my brothers and sisters, they were all able to dance. And I was the youngest, mm. so I was the last up. So I wasn't taught, but I, I taught myself. I picked it up from what they were doing. So I loved the dancing. And even when I, I started playing the box on at... Um, you know, when I was in my teens and uh, never felt like that I would have been good enough because uh, I would have had access or I would have been in company of people like uh, Joe Cooley actually, I remember him coming into the King Cora and uh, McLean Condon whom as I say, I adored the way he played because he was a great set dance player like you know but there was another great box player that used to come to Liston Van that time for the call he'd be Maeve Dundee's brother Mal Donnelly he's played three or all card and I used to hang around with him mm -hmm. and uh, and then of course in the later years uh, like the great Matty Ryan from Tulla would arrive like and God he was something special you know and so I, I was always kind of said oh, like, I can't do what they're doing like so I won't do it at all and I, I'm like that own sort of anything I do if I can do right, I tend to go, go away from it, like you know. And with that, and I had the I had the box. I sold them and just got rid of them and just. So you're 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 sixteen, seventeen, eighteen year olds. You're playing the box and, and you're yeah. you're two miles from Doolan, and yet you never went down to Doolan to play tunes. I went to Doolan as a listener, not as a musician. And the the, the, the difficult the reason for that all next year again as I covered in my book, my mother had uh, strong ideas about the drinking culture in Doolan, mm -hmm. and she was worried that I'd get cut up. She knew I was able to play mm. and she was worried that I'd get cut up in that drinking culture and she was right. As I and of the was, it, was it that you were obedient or was it just a different time where you do what your mother told you? I was obedient. You were obedient, I was obedient, yeah. Was yeah. Obedient, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, uh, the, both of them had a huge influence on me. Uh, she never liked drink. Mm. She never liked drink. She drank herself, but she mm. never liked drink. Mm. I never took a drink in my life. Never? Never. I've never tasted a glass of wine to this day. Isn't that interesting? Never smoked a And was it a conscious decision or just something that happened and you never felt like it and then it went on and on I, and then it, you became it was, an non I, I She was always saying to me, like, you know, watch the drink, be careful. She had a thing about drink. And I just, just, I just went along with it. And then, as I say, when I went to London in this early 1970s, like, you know, I'm working with Murphy's, the builders, mm. out on the road, digging up roads and sewers and whatever. You and... Uh, these are hard men. Mm. These are hard drinkers. And, and drink is the is the is the drink release. Is, it's the release, yeah. like, you know. And uh, it took them a while to kind of accept me the fact that I wasn't drinking. But then, 
very soon they kind of got in their heads, oh, Oliver's okay, and then I'd be in demand because I'd take him home and I'd drive And them. did you play any music in London? No, but I just went everywhere Phil Dwyer was playing, or Martin McMahon, yeah. or Roger Sherlock, or Raymond Rowland, or P.J. Crotty. I'd follow them around. This is the 70s, is it? The 70s, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. The 70s, and I was very interested in the music scene. I just stayed with it, never played, just went to listen to them. Because you've, you've, you've travelled a remarkable journey, and, and as you say, your audio uh, book, is, is available now and it, it documents your, your life story in music and song and words and uh, it's like it's like you're only starting now it's like you're you're the last couple of years you're 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 just you've arrived and you're getting uh, the ability to express yourself is that true it is true yeah no, look i know myself um i don't have the technical ability that other players have but I know one thing, I know I have rhythm. Mm -hmm. I know I have rhythm, I have rhythm to die for. And, and it's only now I'm beginning to look back and, re and realise that when Michael Russell played the tin whistle, he put like, the long pauses in between the notes or what have you. And like, those pauses are music, those pauses are notes mm -hmm. themselves. Mm -hmm. like, and, you know, it's, it's, um, and I've seen so many people go down the technical route to get it so Do you perfect. think we've been conditioned by those in the know that a certain type of traditional music is good and it, it's it's like these are way better than other people yes. because people were told that yes yes that we didn't people didn't make up their own mind to a certain extent they were yeah. told that certain people are masters and and, and and other people aren't masters and maybe maybe all along many of us were just looking for soul yeah, but also, on, but also on some of those players who are really, really good, mm -hmm. they know they're good and they let other people know they're good as well, mm -hmm. which means that they have stifled uh, the, the individuality of people. I mean, for example, uh, Finn Bardwell was one of my great heroes playing the box of Martin McMahon, like I loved mm -hmm. him, Martin Connolly as well. Mm -hmm. But like, if every box player in the world was playing exactly like Finn Bardwell, some music would be very boring. <laughs> We all need to put our own to the stand. And it's only in this later years in life, at this point in my life, that I suddenly realise that I may not like, be able to play like those people, but they, those people can't play like me either. Yeah, no, I agree. And I, lo I like your box playing. I love your box playing. But I also like your ability to, to understand the excitement of music without speeding it up. I like your, 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 your uh, constant, happy rhythm. But I, I, I know that... I, I know how... I know a German girl that, 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 that learned the concertina by, by Skype from you yeah. and you just gave her, because my belief is that you can, there are certain instruments you can play music on and you can be a beginner and sound absolutely beautiful absolutely, yeah. if, if, if you have a bit of heart and a, and a bit of um, knowing when to stretch a note maybe or not. Correct, and you, yeah. you, can, you can, like I was talking to Tony a lot earlier and he was talking about his grandfather Lilton to him and that gave him the ability to know when a note could be dragged out, maybe or dragged. Which, which, if you look, uh, I, I know I won't be doing a lot of talking, but I remember Jackie Daly uh, in the, in the early eighties been so exciting because just when he throw a big long drag out of the Guardian, it was like a rock and roll, or it was like everybody lifted. And I think you have that ability. Yeah, well, uh, Tony talking about the lilting. The mm -hmm. lilting was very important because if somebody is able to recreate on an instrument. <clears throat> The, the music sounds that somebody can create with their mouth, they'll be a great player. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember uh, at a, inside the University in Limerick one time, Brendan Mulcair, the large person who died last year, he brought Martin McMahon, the box player, in to do a lecture on music inside the Limerick University. And of course, every box player in the country came to hear him. And he would up on the stage and he's talking, and Martin, like, you know, doesn't teach, what have you. He's, he's a beautiful player, he just, it just flows out of him. But he said to his, he said in the, on the stage to his wife, Teresa, he said, can you come up and join me? So she didn't know what was mm -hmm. happening. So she came up and she sat beside him. He said, will you lilt the yellow tinker? Mm -hmm. And she, the poor woman already collapsed. But she lilted it. And then he played it exactly, note for note, and phrase for everything that she did, he did it on the box. Yeah. And it was absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. Noel Hill was in the audience, I believe, that day, and was mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. staggered, you know, as they all were. Uh, and you know that that's it. Like you know, the, the music, the music is inside in all of us. It's how you project it, and how you deliver it out, and how you take it out. And the rhythm, the rhythm does that. Rhythm is rhythm. Is, is there a danger that 
you can have too much ornamentation you can have too oh, many absolutely yeah absolutely i think simplicity is the key it, well, it is one of the keys it's one of the keys yeah, you simply yeah. but and you know it, it, the, the way i look at it now at the moment on is keep it simple and be able to play for dancers that mm. you lift the dancers off the floor mm. and uh, like you know music is a mood it's a mood it's when you mood. play, is it the same mood every time you play, or is it? No, but I mean, you, when you're when you're sad, do you play the same way as you play when you're happy. No, no, no. If if you're sad, you play. You have to put that kind of sadness into the. If you're playing in the slow way or something. No, but in playing reels. On the playing reels, then no, no. You, would you pretend to be in the same humour as if you were in bad old form and you were asked to play somewhere? Would you go in and 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 and, and yes. Yes, yeah, I'd, I'd plan the mask. I think you would. Yeah. I'd plan the mask yeah. and I'd, I'd yeah. play my heart out as if there wouldn't be. The, I've always done that in every but if you were, if, if you weren't playing for a crowd, say you're just having a few friends in, 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 a, in, a, in a room and, and, and you weren't feeling right, wrong, would you have ability to play the, the yes. real in, in a... In a Lively, there wouldn't know the difference. So would you ever let the, your, your mood influence mm. your music? I, I wouldn't let the bad mood influence. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. No, I, I don't actually you mean bad, but I, I understand. Yeah, yeah if I was a bad, depressed yeah, place, yeah, yeah. as a matter of fact, it's, it's, it's one of the things that takes me out of it. Yeah, I agree. You know? Yes, I, I perfect. Yeah, <laughs> you're a great man of words, Oliver, and uh, it, it's a, it's a joy to to, 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 to be someone who, who who loves loves to express themselves in, in a good way. And I know you you write songs, and I know you sing songs, and I I love you sing songs you wrote. I will, yeah, I'll do one for you. Uh, <clears throat> I'll change the box in for a moment. <clears throat> uh, i do this one. I might do all the verses, just a couple of verses maybe. Do all the verses. Okay, I'll do all the verses. <laughs> We've all nice. Yeah, maybe you're right, maybe yeah. <laughs> There's the rainbow in the heavens Just outside my button home and the nesting swallow goes land here from far across the foam. I hear the whistling trees make music here at night, and the mountain that is Mullochmore is bathed in moonlight. Those misty copper mountain tops are a wondrous sight to see. As the dewdrops of the springtime nestle on the bottom tree, the cuckoo cock from afar, the pine martin, fox and hare, there is peace and beauty all around, my bottom home and clear. I often walk the famine road where hunger victims died. And I see the ruins of famine homes where hungry children cried. The landlord's house has fallen down and the roof has fallen in. No foreign tyrant here now to rule the lives of Irish men. When you walk this bottom land in Clare, your God is by your side. In the place where your ancestors and famine souls have died, I see it all from my window, and there's nothing to compare. When the sun goes down over Mullochmore, in my bottom home of Clare. Golden rays of sunlight bounced on ancient craggy rocks and wrapped us all in a mantle of glory on this track of tears in Clare. Hiding sweet sorrows from famine ravaged Ireland where hungry spirits dwelled in makeshift resting places sheltered from the wild Atlantic Ocean by rocks and by dolmens that are older than Pharaoh's temple here in this place where the stillness screams at you. But the spirits of our people radiate a comforting presence as they lie here in peace, in their final resting place. You tread on their footsteps and on their tombstones, 
as you weave your way over sacred structures and vertical stone walls. In this land of myth and magic, that has witnessed the passing of hungry souls in a land of plenty. On this day, the descending sun, it shimmers and it sparkles on the still waters of the timeless lake set in stone in this lunar land. You walk with an almighty presence by your side as the spiritual healing of this burned place sears into your soul and it moulds your spirit to the landscape of Clare. Trommel's army came to Clare in 1653 And the tyrant Lord Law searched this land to find a hanging tree This rugged landscape scared them and they left without a trace There were no match for the men of Clare for the landscape of this place I have peace and healing here in Clare in this crazy world of pain and I wash away my troubles in this misty burden rain I bathe in crystal waters in timeless lakes so grand where the healing and the music is buried in the land where the swans and Greenland geese, they stare and wander all around. As they congregate together on this holy sacred ground, I have it all in this mystic place, there's music in the air, where my spirits soar over Mullockmore in my bottom home. We're in the house of Oliver O'Connell, <coughs> born in Fern Hill between Lisbon and Vernon and Doolan, and uh, behind those curtains is Mullockmore. And Oliver, I, 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 uh, I get that song. It gets, it gets, it's a powerful, powerful uh, poem. Put to put to music, I think. Uh, you're, you're a poet. Uh, you <laughs> are, yeah, because. Because you, you bring us places with your poetry, with your songs, with your words, and there's no denying that you're, you just grab us and you take us exactly so. It, it's County Clare is your, is your heart and soul, and wherever you've been, I presume, yeah, you've had a, a, an interesting life story, but it's, ended, or it's not ended up at the moment. Anyway, you're here at the foot of Mullickmore Mountain. That's a good place to be. It's a great place to be on. Um, I found it... Yeah, a good few years now, like, but as I say, I'm from North Clare anyway. And my, the O'Connell family, like, uh, we're here over 500 years, like, I can trace, I can trace our family history back to County Clare, like, like 28 generations. Blackie's little boy, my grandson, Jeremiah, he's the 28th generation of O'Connells here in this county, you know. So we have a, we have a long tradition of being here. But uh, I found it tremendously, um, incredibly helpful here, John. I remember it's, it was this time exactly uh, two years ago when the news came about the coronavirus in, in China and things were happening all over the world. I'll never forget Friday the 13th of March, Friday the 13th, I remember St. Patrick's Day was on a Tuesday that day mm. and I was in Ennis and at the um, Piper's, Blackie's Piper in Heavenly Hill and Pat Brodick was the guest Piper. Mm. He was the last man I shook hands to and he died a week later, you know. Mm. And uh, I remember, the, the, I remember the the, the, the the eerie kind of feeling that was all over the town at that time, that particular day in particular, you know. And I, I, I'll go back to that in a moment. And I remember coming home, and you could see like that, like there was a guy inside in, in the pipe in heaven, heaven and hell, in constant showing me his phone where the army were going to have a lockdown, have you? And it was all there, and you could, it was on the people, you could see it in their faces. And on my way home, I got as far as Christine, and I made the decision. I didn't know what this virus, how bad or how good it was. I said, right. I'm going to lock myself down now until this thing is over. Mm -hmm. And I was in this house here for 89 days without seeing Colin Gort or Ennis. Right? And then, the, and I remember that I could recite for you Leo Varadkar, the, the Taoiseach speech on St. Patrick's Night. This is a St. Patrick's Day like no other. I can, you know, and I, I know it was serious. But then, um, as luck would have it, it was a very fine year. 
and all my neighbours they were bringing me groceries and they were bringing me vegetables and they were bringing me food and everything like you know and I used to go up down there the burning road and I would say to myself God I'm a lucky man how lucky I am to have like this amount of scenery and flowers and landscape go back to my own home and I had food and, and instead of feeling I, I stopped watching the news I didn't watch the television I, I haven't bought a newspaper in five years you know uh, I don't buy newspapers because good news does not make news mm -hmm. bad news is news that's so that's why we're bombarded with it and the, with, the, with the virus and trying to deal with it I felt that was enough so I said I, I spent all of that time even in, as a matter of fact in the last two years I spent the last, all of that every day I would climb Mount Moor Mountain I go down to the lakes I do the famine road I did as much of that burden as I possibly could I would come back and I would like an artist I would draw out in words what I had seen. You could bring an artist down and he'd paint it, but I could describe it. I could describe the flowers like, you know, swaying with, in the rhythmic breeze blowing in from the Atlantic and the, the wildlife looking at you, uh, staring in wonder as you wander home. Like I was coming there one evening, there was eight pine martins at the back of, in the mountain and they're looking at me as I'm coming back home. Like So I'm able to put that into words. I'm able to paint that kind of picture. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've been doing. And you know, it it kept my sanity it was good for me it gave me a huge amount of confidence and then what i suddenly produced was and you have a great man working with you mickey dunn oh mickey dunn yeah. I, I mean it, it helps I, it helps I, to have, I, have somebody on your side well he he was he, he was just extraordinary because uh like mickey dunn is the piper from limerick. Piper from Car 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 limerick tell us about mickey dunn Mickey Dunn. Mickey Dunn is one of the most extraordinary men on this planet. Uh, he's the most generous, the kindest human being I have ever come across in my life. And he was the man I was automatic choice to launch my audio book here a few weeks ago. Yeah. You were here. You were here. Yeah. Um, this family, there was uh, 14 in the family. He's one of seven brothers and seven sisters. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were great musicians, every one mm -hmm. of them. Every one of them. Christie's great band of John John's of the Lord, mm -hmm. Patrick, Jeremiah, J Joseph. They all could play. Mickey, Mickey was one of the youngest of them. And he used to work for me in Limerick in the nineteen mm. seventies, and uh, he, uh, he he just has an understanding of music, and he's he's gone through a rough time in his life himself, like various issues like that he's had, and he's been ill down the last couple of years, and he's got through all of that, and but he has he's so focused in into the music and the benefits the benefits of music mm -hmm. and what that's able to do for people and I've learned a lot from him even though I'm older than him and yeah. I was his boss but you've been through the as well as I have been through as well yeah. so you have that in common and you're oh we had that yeah. we, we, we're it's, so you, you haven't had an easy time oh no no it has been rough it's yeah so and rough. do you feel do you feel lucky now I do well I mean when I look back on all the things that happened I'm a double cancer survivor mm -hmm. I have two thirds of my stomach removed and my kidney gone uh, I lost my company I lost my job I lost all, yeah, almost a million euro I lost my home I was in eight car crashes in two years. I had two operations. You I were in eight car crashes? Eight crashes years. in one year. In one year. And uh, I lost my wife. Now, all of the rest of the stuff you could put it away. Mm -hmm. Lose the morning was the big one. That was the one. Like, you know. But I, I got through it all. Like, you know, and I, I'm completely cured. And I don't take any medication. I have a very positive attitude. I, don't, I can see solutions, not problems. So it's been tough, Oliver? Yeah, it's been tough. Uh, like, um, as I say, I, I had a lot of... My, my business failed in uh, 2007. I lost a lot of money. I lost my home. I lost my job. Um, were, you, yeah. were, were, were you depressed? Yeah. Did the music bring any help to you? Oh, the music did it. Like, the music, like, when the depression, like, when I say depressed, like, the stress. Stress is the killer mm -hmm. in life. You know, I never mm -hmm. drank or smoked, so I'd be well able to handle lots of things. But the stress, like, really kind of t took me out. And, um, like, I was very lucky um, that I had some people to take me through. Mickey Dunn, of course, was one of them, like, mm. you know, uh, and we spoke about Mickey earlier, like, you know, and uh, there was a man that sort of, I'd never got through what I'd gone through, but for him, mm. he took me, sort of, literally took me by the hand and mm. brought me through, because we've been through something similar together, mm -hmm. and um, I, um, as I say... So were you, were you broke? Oh, yeah. And, yeah. uh... Where were you in Clare? I was in Clare, yeah. I was in Clare. So you, you kind of wake up one morning and everything is gone. And what motivates you to, or what were you looking for? 
over the next few months? What were you trying to be? Who were you, where were you trying to go in that desperate situation? I woke up one morning on with uh, 35 people in my employment. I had 6 million euros worth of planting and equipment that I owned almost literally 80% owned. Mm. If I got another nine months, they were all cleared. Uh, I had close to a quarter of a million euro in three banks because that was part of the company, what have you. And I woke up uh, a week later with nothing at all. Nothing. Everything gone. I, I wasn't even allowed to go into my office. And my, my, my question would be, two months after that, where were you? Where were you living? I, I, I had a rented house in Ennis, yeah. like, and then like I had obviously drastic decisions to make around my what I was going to do for the rest of, that, for the rest of my life. I had uh, these houses here, I had these bought and built, and mm. these were sold. One of these was sold, mm. and luckily enough, the guy who went to buy it, or unluckily enough, suddenly the the, 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 collab, the economic collapse came. He couldn't mm. buy it, mm -hmm. and uh, suddenly the two of them were emptied, and there was no one buying houses, and. <laughs> I'm stuck with a big bill, like you know, and now my company's gone, like and my source of earning has gone. But uh, again, the hardest thing anyone will ever have to do in life is, to, and if you're able to do it, you'll overcome anything, and that is to be positive when the news is bad. Yeah. If you're able to do that, and honest to God, on I have always been able to do that. I've always been able to be to to rise above. The, just say like. You know, tomorrow's another day. Mm. We'll get through it. We'll get through it. And just you have to convince yourself. You have to talk to yourself. And I did that. I wouldn't let it get to me. But it did get to me. And that's the, the stress mm. brought on the the, the, the cancer, the the, the, mm. the the collapse I had here. And I was mm. a very lucky man. Like I was a dead store, you know. But uh, mm -hmm. I got through all of that. And uh, then I just I got the only thing that I got healing from. I was I was a handy enough golfer actually in my day. I you know, give that up as well. Mm. I, I you know I stopped going out. I wasn't doing dancing or playing music like that like that you know, but the only thing that saved me was the music. The lads bought the accordion for me because they knew I played it when I was young, mm -hmm. and I took it back up in my own time and I started messing around with it and I started doing other things and suddenly I began to like what I was doing with it and uh, that was my savior. It, it it certainly was and uh, maybe maybe your the reason you're having such a positive impact now is because of all those crises in your life and uh, that there must be more power in your words now and your music because it, we know it's coming from somewhere that some of us have never been well, i've lived it yeah i've lived it i've experienced it like you know and it's like when i i can't write beautiful poetry about the burden unless i've actually seen it mm -hmm. So you can't write about things unless you've actually experienced it, like you know. Yeah. That, that, that's where the real stuff comes from, like you know. Yeah. But I mean, I'm I'm blown away at the moment, like you know, that people are take so much of my plane or whatever. Because I was one man, and you know it's better than anybody. I had never had any value in my plane, and I'm always unsure and uncertain. Never had any faith in it at all. Yeah. There were certain things that I knew I could do, but plane wasn't one of them. But I'm getting a kick out of it now. You know? Yeah, no, you're great, and there's a real energy in your music. Playing another tune. Another tune. Another I, I hope you don't mind the the the, the, the uh, you're what? you're comfortable speaking yeah, about these yeah. things oh, in life because yeah. I think when you do that you're helping people oh, yeah. that are listening that might be in different situations. Oh God, yeah. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. great. I do you know I play waltz as well. Do you know. <laughs> Thank you. 
this is not the first time I've been in this house. You, 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 you have a, you have a nice way of doing house sessions. You welcome people, tours and individuals and friends and neighbours in, and uh, I, I've come here a few times and I don't know who's who, what way they're here, but everybody's the same. Everybody's just welcome, and and, and uh, it seems to be a thing that is becoming coming back a bit. Coming back, uh, <coughs> not everybody yeah. wants the pub situation anymore. No, no, the, I think life has changed it has, yeah, yeah. and uh, but there's there's a thing that, that's very important to remember that some houses have an atmosphere or a home, the atmosphere. You won't get it in every house. And uh, like we we always had it in our own house above in North Clare. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, I have transferred that kind of atmosphere to every place I had. When I was in Shannon and when I lived in the market Fergus, I mean we would have Martin Hayes, Martin Connolly, Mickey Dunn, you name them, we'd have them inside the house like even before Blackie ever played with Joan. Mm -hmm. I'd have Christy Dunn and, and Noel Kirby and I would have had uh, Jim Lawler from Nina, all these musicians, they, they were always inside, always inside my house, like, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, so the, there was always music, whatever I was, there was always music, I mightn't have been the player or the man or whatever, but I had the music coming after me, I often brought lads home at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, like, and I'd bring them into the house with my wife, God be good to her, and the lads would be fast asleep above bed, they wouldn't even hear them, we'd be playing around the kitchen, and then I toured America in 83, which, I mean, I had Martin Hayes with me, and I had Mickey Dunn, I had Martin Candy, we had 18 and then we toured all over America and Canada. One of our audiences in 1984 in the Hart Plaza in Detroit was 75,000 people. There was only 50,000 with Bob Dylan the same year in Slane, the same week. <laughs> and the week before... And well, how, how did you get 75,000 people? There were 75,000 people at the festival. We were, we were at the top of the bill. Nobody knows that. No. The year before that it was Bacon and Clancy were top of the bill, and the year before that it was the Chieftains. And Oliver, with, the, with this ragbag crowd from County Clare, were the top of the bill in 1984, with 75,000 people there over the three days. Yeah, well, you do think, I mean, you brought the Chieftains to Ennis and put them into the church. Yeah. 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 1,400 people in the yeah. middle of a pandemic at 50 euro ahead. Yeah, yeah. And we packed it to the door. Came so, in from 33 countries around the world. So, what's the What's the vision? Where do you see yourself musically in two years' time? Or where would you like to see yourself? The same where you are now? The same where I am now. Mm. I just want to be myself. I want to do what I'm able to do with myself now to the best of my own ability. I'm not going to do, uh, I'm not going into the All Island Flair and like that, or, you know, I'm not going to do that. I'll do my own thing, my own way. Uh, and there's a whole lot of people out there that likes it, and if there's a whole lot of people out there who doesn't like it, that's grand too. That's, I, I'd be yeah. I'd be delighted for them as well. But I do my own thing, my own way. I'm in the finishing process now. I've did my audio book done. I'm getting great react. It's in eighteen. It's sorry. It's a, today. It's in nineteen countries today. A fell in Tasmania has my book, my life story about mm -hmm. Dolan and the the music and Dolan and the characters and the colours. Was it hard to write that book? The hardest thing you ever had to do. Because you're, you, you, everybody would have their own, when history is, like as we know, history has been revised all the time, you know, and, and sometimes you really wonder what the hell did we hear years ago and that somebody, your vision or your, 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 your ability to see around you. I, lo I love the way you, 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 you notice people and you notice what's going on and I think your book really captures that. I think uh, it, it really captures the, the day-to-day -day life of and how much love you have for your neighbours and your friends and your and your Absolutely, people yeah. and, 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 and and the musicians particularly right, the musicians yeah. you love them i love them yeah they, they, well they, they, they they're, they're part of the essence of what we are on the, the guys who play music the tony loptons and you know the joe Renz and the, those kind of people the bobby gardens johnny condens there Mm -hmm. That's who we are. That's they, they embody everything that's good about Irish people. Those kind of people. And how how did it happen that women didn't weren't in that company? I just mentioned earlier there about Mickey Dunn. He mm -hmm. was one of seven brothers and seven sisters. Mm -hmm. The seven brothers played. The seven sisters never played. And I think it was just something coming down along. I suppose if you look at if you look at history, particularly Irish history in particular. Women had tough lives. Mm -hmm. They had a tough job. They had to look after houses and big families and what have you. I don't think they had the time to play music. And, it, and then again, an awful lot of houses and music was frowned on and whatever. Yeah. It wasn't allowed in. Like you know, we were lucky that we were we come from an environment where 
my, my mum and dad liked it otherwise mm. like and my mother like she'd love me being around with uh, Tom Scalone and McLean Conlon and mm. General Lockton because mm. she knew they were sound people now no disrespect to anybody there was other musicians she didn't want me there at mm. all because she felt like it, they'd be bad influence mm. that, that's fact that's yeah. fact you know and was, I mean? there, was there social differences like would it have been a working class labourers that played the music in your when you were a child correct there would, would have been nobody from the, the wealthier no. not at all it wasn't part of their, yeah. their and that might have been something to do with that's it that's that's um there was no wealthier people that would no it was no, definitely no. Just, uh, yeah. and i was asked that question now actually owned by a very prominent musician in county clare well-known man a long time ago for example how come this Varna, for example, never had the same reputation for music as Doolan had, mm. even though there was only four miles in the difference, like mm. you know. But uh, I think class distinction, distinction came into there. Mm -hmm. Doolan was a, definitely was a poorer community. Mm -hmm. It was tough out there. You know, you're fishermen the, and farmers. Yeah, you're on the fishermen and farmers. You're on the edge of the mm -hmm. sea there, like and you know, I, I, I have, I have memories of the United fishermen rolled in from in a sheer like to Doolan and they had these big heavy. Uh, tweed jackets and tweed trousers and the chris hanging down tweed caps and walking from the pier after no upper mortar after rowing from in a shear mm -hmm. walking to liston barn now we lived halfway between the two mm -hmm. places so they'd come on to, into our house we my mother would make tea for them or whatever mm -hmm. you know. um they spoke the most beautiful gaelic then they'd go into liston barn and they'd, they'd have their drinks there like and then they'd come back out and that time flour came in 10 stone bags now 10 stone bag is 140 pounds and they'd come with that on their shoulder walking from the Stavana to Doolan they'd stop at our house on the way back then they'd go to Connors they'd have a few pints there then they'd walk 10 up. stone 10 stone and it gets better I'll tell you a better one on the morning 4 miles with 10 stone back yeah yeah no, how, how, well, you haven't had the best of it but then they'd walk from O'Connors up to the pier onto yeah. the boat they'd have a good few pints in them row across to Nishir ask anybody in Doolan mm. they'll t ask any of the lads in Inishir they'll mm. tell you and then they get off the boat on the side and then walk up to the top of the hill in Inishir mm. and I was I was in Inishir a couple of years ago with my friend Tommy Fagan and I was telling him and one of the guys in the hall Shari what is on mm. the horse and cab and I was telling him the story and uh, he said to me Are you were coming I said yeah mm. and you didn't fell in the because he didn't mm. know me I said yeah he said one of those men he says was my dad Lovely. and it was a very very great story actually I used to, they used to bring arm banner potatoes to my mother mm -hmm. and they'd have fresh mackerel as well that was our dinner and I told him the story and on the way back with the horse and car he drove he did a detour and he stopped in front of the house and he went into the back of the house he was gone for maybe 20 minutes he came out with a big bag of potatoes he said they are for you now he said That's right. yeah good times good times hard times hard times you know yeah, yeah, so yeah. like as i said the men had tough times the women had tough times like you know and was that in every aspect of life that it was the, the way, was there many wealthy people around the, let, let's put it like this on in my experience and you know i i was careful enough when i wrote the book like but i, I have the experiences of it but mm -hmm. obviously you know sometimes experiences you're, you're about to have to give them to yourself like, well you don't want to hurt anybody you don't want to hurt anybody mm -hmm. i know them but we had in in my opinion, we had wealthy people, uh, and we had people who thought they were wealthy. Mm -hmm. And there was actually three tiers. If you were to ask me straight up, mm -hmm. I reckon there was three tiers of classes mm -hmm. in the people when I was growing up as a child. Mm -hmm. I, and I Are they still up. there? Hidden? I don't think so. Good. I don't think so. Yeah. Don't. I, I have seen yeah. them, like, you know, I'm around a long time. I've seen dramatic changes yeah, yeah. now. No, I don't think they're there now. Mm -hmm. I think that's gone. And, and good riddance to it, like yeah, know. good riddance is right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was very vocal about it, and uh, for that reason, <laughs> you know, sometimes I get into trouble because I say what I think. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And, I, and I'm known for it. Like I say what I'm thinking, it gets me into trouble sometimes. Mm. But but that's the way I am. You know, mm. I'm real. I am mm. real. I, if there's something that has to be said or there's something that has to be told, I, I don't tolerate abuse or I don't tolerate racial. I don't racism or anything I don't tolerate it I don't tolerate good musicians looking down on bad musicians or, or musicians who are not as good as them I don't mm. tolerate it mm -hmm. anywhere it is I've rooted it out like, mm -hmm. you know. mm -hmm. and of course what has happened now you have children come up now and <laughs> they blow you off the water mm -hmm. some of these guys course, in Boston, yeah. like, you know? well I've right I've enjoyed talking to you and I could talk to you for and I do talk to you for hours I meet you outside of this broadcast and I, I, I love I love I love the the way time flies when because uh, you're never boring 
you've always felt. I'd like to I'd like to finish up. It's your choice, either a set of tunes or maybe a song. It's your choice, not, um, or a poem, or anything that you might like. Actually, yeah, I'll do some, well, I, I will. I'll do something like that. Actually, and thank you very much for. You're thank you very much for, very welcome for your you. hospitality. No problem at all. Mr. Oliver O'Connell. Um, I'll do, yeah, I know exactly what I'll do. Walk with God on this fertile soil and stare in wonder on the vale of Fermile. Listen to the Atlantic roar and hear the waves crash the rocky shore. Stop and stare at nature's force as the Cahar River runs its course from Burden Hills to Valleys Fair, soothing the landscape of my North Clare, my own place by Burden Walls, where we listen to the curlew's calls, we watch the nesting swallows fly. The stars at night on a burden sky. We kneel on ancient rocks and we pray for hungry souls who have passed this way. The friendly way from the cottage door and the dancers' feet and the kitchen floor. This mystic place where my spirit soar. My place of birth. My sweet Fenor. Mm -hmm. 